Hello, Eagle fans. This is Calvin Barnes from the NCC Sports Network. Welcome back to Where Are They Now, where we interview former student athletes and see what they're up to post-NCCU. Joining me today from the volleyball program is Naima Stennett. Naima was an intricate part of the 2006 CIAA championship team. That team also went 21-13 and 13 in our first year in Division I play. She finished the season with 206 kills and 71 blocks, which was the second on the team. These are only just a few of her many accomplishments she has achieved here at NCCU. Naima, it is a pleasure for you joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad to have you. You know, you've been up to a lot. I know about what you've been up to, but for the people who may not even know about who you are personally, just go ahead and tell the people just a little bit about yourself. Sure. So my name is Naima Stennett. I'm originally from Jamaica. Big up on the Caribbean, massive them. And um, I started at NCCU um, playing volleyball. And while I was playing volleyball for North Carolina Central University, I was actually playing volleyball also for Jamaica. And so it was that opportunity playing volleyball for my high school, Wilma's High School for Girls, and playing volleyball for Jamaica that afforded me the passport to come to the United States and to be a part of the um, Eagle Club. Um, <laughs> Um, after I uh, completed my undergraduate at North Carolina Central University, I went on to do my master's at NCCU and then went on to medical school at East Carolina University and then went down to Miami um, where I did my residency in family medicine. And um, I am back in Durham. I'm very excited to be here. Very excited to be a part of the um, sports medicine team and the sports medicine um program at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, where hopefully I will be taking care of NCCU athletes. We love to have you back. We just love to get you back in North Carolina. You've been doing amazing things. However, you have been busy. So I just got to ask, what have you learned about yourself being on the front line of COVID-19? One of the biggest takeaways I've gotten from COVID-19 and, you know, working in the hospital, working alongside my colleagues and different healthcare providers, nurses, um, emergency medicine, um, physicians and techs, et cetera, is the power of community and the, the community effort that has to be put forward to protect not only ourselves, but to help take care of the population. And, you know, we talk about, you know, medicine being a team sport. It truly is because there's so many players, there's so many things that goes along to being a part of this whole pandemic and being a part of a, the healthcare team that's taking care of patients and taking trying to take care of ourselves also that goes into it and so again it brings me back to nccu days when i used to play volleyball that team effort that team spirit that perseverance that courage that stick to itness i call it you know getting up and going to work and getting up and, and playing your part even if you don't feel like it um so that community feeling and that um, team teamwork, I, I absolutely love it. And I continue to, I feel like continue to play sports in that sense. Medicine has been my sport after finishing um, college. Thank you so much for your contribution doing again. You're on the front line, one of the essential workers. We appreciate you here at NCCU and all throughout the world, just the sacrifice that you're making to try to help us get through this whole pandemic. And I'm pretty sure if you got one thing to tell people, wear your mask. <laughs> please, please do. Um, you know, as, as you all know that there is a second wave that's happening right now. And um, I was just listening to NPR as I was driving home. And they mentioned that, you know, the estimated deaths going towards December, we can actually have an impact on that by wearing our mask and practicing social distancing. So, yes, I encourage everyone to please wear your mask. Um, like you said, you was playing volleyball there again. You were part of that championship team. What was that feeling like that season? Like, did you feel like, you know, what, at what point in that season were you like, okay, we can win this championship? <laughs> so I definitely remember that time. I was a very young on campus. It was my um, it was my first time playing at that level. You know, I, I played against countries before, but um, the collegiate level is is a level that otherwise I would not have experienced in high school. And I remember my teammates. You know, we all had our different strengths and the encouragement that we felt during that time. And I was so glad to be a part of a team that was working towards a goal and had a legacy to kind of carry, right? Because we were already two times uh, CIAA champions. Mm -hmm. And then here I come and there's an opportunity to be three-peat. And so that was an amazing feeling. I was very feeling, I was very young at that time. And um, I just wanted to soak up and learn as much as I could. 
We had, again, some powerhouses on our team. Shari Matthews was one of them. Latoya Tate was another. Um, and so I think with the effort of everyone, um, our coaching staff, we, we took it home. And, um, you know, getting that three-peat. Yeah, so that was an amazing feeling. And um, I think that same year, the football team actually won that championship in... Um, 2006. Yeah, yeah 2006. Yep, 2006. So it was a great year for NCSU Athletics, period. Um, so, yeah. It was a, it was a great, amazing, amazing time. Yeah, that, that 2006 CIAA time, that was just so, so lovely. So, so many championships. And so, you know, just to touch base on that with volleyball winning football, I believe uh, women's basketball uh, won that year. So we had so many championships that year in our last year at the CIAA. Just talk about what that was like, just not just for your team, but for the whole athletic department to know, hey, this program is stepping up. This program is stepping up. Was it kind of like an accountability thing? It's like, look, this program got one. We got to go win one now. <laughs> You know what? Um, somebody once said that there's no such thing as luck. It is when preparation meets opportunity. And I think that year we were just on it. You know, I think all the programs, I think we all had goals in mind to accomplish that year and we just did it. You know, we had the talent, we put in the work and, you know, we did well during the season and we delivered. And, you know, as you know, that with any sport and any season, there's ups and down, and that season was our season for sure. Um, we we were we were killing it that year, <laughs> right? And you know, again, championship proves right there how y'all was just on point with everything. <laughs> you know, you talked about playing a little bit at NCCU, but you also mentioned earlier you did play for your home country of Jamaica. So talk to us about that experience of you know playing for your home country and you know in that whole experience. So um, in high school, I, as I mentioned before, I went to Wilma's High School for girls. My coach, Mr. O'Neill Ibans, we call him Starry. Um, he's one of the most um, passionate persons, a person I know um, that is in volleyball. You know, his energy, his drive, his commitment to us as athletes, it is so infectious. And so as an athlete, as a young athlete in high school, I mean, it just, he just pulled out the best in you. And you just wanted to be better because of him. So that discipline that I had from high school definitely translated when I translated into my, um, in the opportunities I had playing for Jamaica. And one of my first tournament was in the Dominican Republic, was the Pan American Games in 2005. And that was my introduction to the world stage. There were big, big, big powerhouses like Cuba, Dominican Republic, the United States of America. And I remember seeing the United States team play and saying to myself, wow, one day I'm going to get there. And I remember most of those girls, um, I think they were from maybe Stanford. They actually played for the um, United States. Um, sorry, they were in college while they were playing for the U.S. Um, team. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know, what an amazing opportunity to, to be a powerhouse like that with the with the training and with the support because unfortunately coming from a small island like Jamaica we don't necessarily have all that support and I think that's where sports medicine comes into play because sports medicine is a team of specialists including orthopedic surgeons primary care sports medicine docs athletic trainers physical trainers and so I think that exposure to be on the world field um and knowing that, you know, there was, we had so much more room for improvement and we had so much more room to grow, it definitely motivated me. And um, that time playing in the Caribbean and playing against these countries, it just made me want to work harder. And as I said before, volleyball afforded me the passport to come to the United States and come to North Carolina Central University and be a part of that legacy. And um also, it, we had the support there. We had the athletic trainers, strength and conditioning coaches. And um, that was a huge difference from being home and, and, and being in college, which I, I greatly appreciated. And um, it has uh, helped me to become a better athlete. I still consider myself an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it has definitely carried me through for sure. As an international student, what was your experience like going from Jamaica to NCCU? <laughs> so first of all, there's no snow in Jamaica. I <laughs> was definitely like, it was fun for the first five minutes. It's like, oh, snow, this is so cool. This is what I see on TV. And then when you got really cold, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for it to go. Um, <laughs> so definitely the four seasons, experience in the four seasons was definitely different. You know, for Jamaica, it's the dry months and the wet months. So um, that was definitely different. 
um, clearly, I think, you know, we're huge on reggae music and dancehall and coming to NCCU, uh, you know, more hip hop and rap and that type, that type of uh, genre of music and different cultures in terms of the food. You know, I, I got introduced to soul food. Um, so mac and cheese, collard greens, cornbread, you know, candy yams, one of my favorite things. Um, corn dog. <laughs> <laughs> First time having corn dog was, you know, at NCCU. So, you know, the food, the culture was definitely a little bit different. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I guess um, how the classroom is set up and clearly the age difference, right? So I came on campus. I'm 16 years old. I'm thinking this is like normal, normal. And everybody's like, what? You're not even legal yet. <laughs> <laughs> Of right. course, you know, the, the age difference and, you know, people's reaction towards me when they're like, wait, you're just 16 years old and you're on campus. And I'm just like, yeah, it's not what everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what would you say was your, was your favorite moment? You know, we talked about the championship earlier. What would you say is your favorite moment as a student here at NCCU? You know, I have so many. And if I had to think about one moment that really stand out for me, it was um, the university, um, sorry, North Carolina Central University speech competition. Mm. So I remember being in a speech class or, or course, and the professor said, if any of you enter the speech competition and win, you don't have to come back to class. And I thought to myself, man, you know, I don't even like public speaking. I've never really done it. Um, but I, I, at the same time, between practices and games, I kind of don't want to be in this class if I don't have to be either. <laughs> so I actually went and applied and submitted an essay to do the speech competition. And I actually won. I could not believe <laughs> that initially I said to myself, man, that's not going to happen. And I went for it. I had the support of the professor and I, I won and I never had to go back to that class again. And I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> it definitely stands out. Um, I would say another moment that stood out for me, um, I would say would be just in general homecoming, right? Um, I went to a, Jamaica is a small high school. It, I went to an all girl high school and um, clearly uh, NTCU it's male and female. And then there's a uh, multiple sports and within the multiple sports, it's so many different personalities and different backgrounds. You know, the tennis team had players from all over the world. The volleyball team had players from all over the world. Um, the football team is like a whole melting pot. And so during homecoming, you know, we would interact with each other and then we'll meet, you know, those from the Caribbean. And it was just like a one big family affair. And I absolutely loved it. Um, and it's one of the things that I think in general, most colleges are looking forward to, but unfortunately because of the pandemic, we necessarily have homecoming anymore. You know, as people already know, again, like I said, you're a doctor. So can you talk to us about your path in getting your doctoral degree? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as you know, I did the four years at NCCU and traditionally you don't necessarily have to do a master's, but I went ahead and did a master's. So the traditional if you go from undergrad straight through medicine you will do four years of undergraduate four years of medical school you will do residency where you train in your specialty so my specialty is family medicine and there's various specialties such as pediatric surgery geriatrics radiology internal medicine for example and then you could do a subspecialty and so my subspecialty i'm doing is sports medicine so minimum you'll do four years undergrad four years um, medical school and three years minimum residency. So you're looking at 11 years. So I did a master's degree. So to that 11 years, go ahead and add an additional three years. So 14 <laughs> years. And it sounds daunting, but you know, I tell everyone medicine is not a sprint. It is a marathon. So you don't expect to go out and go full force. It's gonna, it's gonna be a journey. You're gonna have to learn things about yourself and change things along the way. And you're gonna, your support system is gonna also change and you're gonna learn things along the way because at the end of the day, you don't want a doctor who just went to school for four years, right? So, you know, that's a part of the course is the years of training. And that is to make sure that we sharpen our tools and that we're ready to treat people as we like to be treated ourselves and, you know, stay up to date with what's going on. So for sure, it is definitely a marathon and I, you know, people are like, boy, name I look like you love school. And I'm like, mm, not quite. It's just, you know, it's just a requirement. So from 16 years old, I'm 30 years old now. 
<laughs> I've been in training. Um, so it is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. Do you have your own scholarship fund? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the SAT scholarship fund, I actually um, had the idea while I was at NCCU. And um, coming to the United States, we have to take the SAT and we need it to enter into college and also to be eligible for scholarships. And so it is a huge financial burden being an international student because not only have to think about the SAT, but we have to think about visa applications and um, other uh, nuances that it takes to come over to this country. And so I developed the Naima Senate SAT Scholarship Fund, and it basically covers the SAT for international students who want to come to the US, be eligible for scholarships, um, and decrease some of that financial burden it costs about a hundred US dollars to take this exam. And so if I could um, eliminate at least one thing off of uh, that list of things that we have to pay for, I thought this would be a great opportunity. I had a lot of help. I had a lot of support from faculties and staff from NCCU, East Carolina University, University of Miami. So it has grown over the years and um, we've had some success stories. So I'm very proud of that. Speaking of giving back, why do you feel like it's financially important for people, especially alum, to support NCCU? You know what? Um, it takes a village, right? Um, to carry on this legacy, to help support our student bodies, to make sure that we stay on the map, it's important that we give back and we, we support. You know, we see the other huge universities around us, such as University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, and, and of course it's a bigger school and they have a bigger alum, and. You know, you know, people would say, oh, yeah, that's just a rich school, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, in Jamaica, we have a saying, every mickle make a muckle, and that simply means if we all give, it will eventually add up, right? And so it's so important that when we cross that stage, we don't just take off and soar off in the opposite direction. You know, we circle back and we give back and we help out those behind us. You know, not in, in every in every stage, in every step of our lives, we can all think about somebody whose shoulder we stood on to get where we are. And I am so grateful for the experience at NCCU, for the support, whether in my academics, in sports, um, and my journey through medicine that has helped me in some shape or form. And you know, for some people, it may not be financial, fin financial backing that they have right now, but it could be their talent. It could be their time. And if you have one of those, I would say help out, out, help out how you can, right? Um, so again, you know, if for students who are there, you know, money's not the biggest thing. So maybe it's your time and your talent. You know, for the alums who end up being successful and getting the positions they are, it could be the financial backing. And, you know, so in any shape or form, I would encourage or eagle alums to give back to contribute you know the nccu i knew in 2006 is totally different than the nccu i know now and that's because people have been given and people have been supporting the university and even though i feel like oh you know it's much better and i didn't necessarily benefit i am still benefiting right because when i go back i have a, a newer um, more um, aesthetically pleasing campus, you know, more people are wanting to go there. I mean, the legacy just keeps growing and that's what we need to contribute and continue to contribute to doing. And, you know, you talk about the changes since you've been there to what it is now. You know, we're celebrating our 10th anniversary of us officially being D1 when we, re when we uh, joined the MEAC and everything. Talk to us about just some of the stuff that you've seen differently from your time at Division II to what you're seeing with these student athletes now. Even something as simple as the cafeteria. We used to eat at the trailer parks. <laughs> <laughs> and now this is beautiful, amazing cafeteria that's there. You know, um, at Dougal Gym and, and the gymnasium has totally transformed. You know, the tracks, the, the, the football field, those have been um, resurfaced and it's amazing. And those things affect play. You know, people think it's just within the athlete. No, nutrition programs, access to sports medicine physicians, like, those are some of the things that wasn't as pronounced as it is now back then. And it definitely shows. I mean, look at the basketball team. Look at the football team. They were MIAC champions um, 2014, 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And 16, um, yeah. Yeah, so it, it definitely shows. You know, other programs, they're still growing. They're still, you know, getting their bearings. So, so it, it, it definitely shows the improvement of the facilities, improvements of coaching staff and resources of the athletes. and um, 
another reason to give back because then we'll get more records and we'll have more titles under our belt. So, um, right. absolutely. Right. We need more trophies, more banners. You know, we, I, w- I want to be able to have just a whole just section off on campus where it's just a trophy room, just everything. CIAA, Division One, all that stuff. <laughs> yes, and our, our, our basketball coach, um, he's doing amazing. I mean, I, I am so proud. I remember being at East Carolina University in medical school and the basketball team was playing and everybody was like, hey, Naima, your school is on the TV. And I'm like, yep, yep, that is where I came from. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, Coach Mullen has definitely built himself an amazing <laughs> program it's from the ground up to right now being, you know, three, he was three-time me uh, straight uh, tournament champions. We just won the regular season championship before this whole COVID situation. So he's definitely has built himself a heck of a program. Um, yeah, absolutely. That. And then Coach Coach um, Wicker, Ingrid mm-hmm. McCree, like she – is continuing to support the athletes, continuing to do good by the athletes. And, you know, I'm sure she has grown over the years too and see how that transition in the athletic department has taken off. And, you know, it's ever evolving. And, and that's what we do as human beings, right? When there is a change, we evolve with the change. And that's what makes us humans. And, you know, and, and that's the beauty of, you know, of, of, of us being in the Eagle Club, being eagle pride is evolving with the time and, and and you know soaring like we always do this upcoming year you'll be in north carolina you'll be working like you said earlier with our head uh, team physician dr stafford um you know with uh unc uh, how does it feel working you know with your alma mater listen total 360 degrees right <laughs> like literally started at NCCU and came right back. And it's an, it's a full circle moment. It's, it, it's, I have no words, as you can tell. I ha- I'm, so, I'm so proud, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy for the opportunity that UNT provided me to, to, to use it as a platform to give back to my school. Um, so I'm just so, so grateful. Um, I, I cannot wait. Unfortunately, the MIAC did push back fall sports. Um, but I'm looking forward for the spring. I, I hope that we can have a season um, because that's one of the reasons I wanted to be here. You know, I wanted to be cheering my 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 um, fellow colleagues along and you know being there to support them throughout their journey in sports. Um, so I'm I'm so happy to be here. Dr. Stafford is amazing. Um, I, I'm very glad again for the opportunity and that he saw something in me that he felt you know. He was confident that I could come here and um, and and fill that that position of being one of the sports medicine uh, fellows for not only UNC but also North Carolina Central University. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about your process going to your uh, getting your doctor's degree. What would you say to not even a student athlete, just a student at NCCU looking forward to pursue uh, becoming a doctor? I I think it's so important that at this stage of our lives we understand that. In order to get anywhere in life, we have to have a routine. And I'm not saying everything is going to be scheduled and everything has to, you know, has a time and a place, but it's so important that we set goals. And in medicine, we have what we call SMART goals. And it's S-M-A-R-T, which stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. And so for athletes and non-athletes who want to go to medical school, set a SMART goal. You know, know what year you want to send that application in, you know, know understand how many programs you want to apply to and what the requirements for each of these programs are, knowing that you have to take the MCAT and then allowing yourself time to study, surrounding yourself with those with similar goals. They may not want to go to medical school, they may want to go to graduate school, but definitely surrounding yourself with those who believe in what you want to accomplish and is going to be there to support and help you to accomplish those goals. And, medicine, you know, in, yeah, medicine is a marathon. And so you're going to be in on this journey for a while. And so planning is not a bad idea. What would you tell a young student or a student athlete considering NCCU, not just for undergrad, but for higher education to get their master's? I, I, I truly believe one of the beauty of coming to an HBCU and in particular at North Carolina Central University is that we have the capacity to support our students at a level, a huge, a a bigger institution will not be able to do so. You know, being able to have that open door policies where professors not only know your name, but they can relate to you at a level that is necessary to support you. And so that's super important, that you're not just a number or a statistics on campus, but you have a relationship with these professors. 
And I think that is one of the, the, the biggest things that NCCU can pride itself with is the classroom size and that relationship that these professors have with their students. Um, it's an open door policy, you know. I can't remember Dr. Heck, she's my, uh, she was my biology professor at NCCU and it was always an open door policy with her. And I told her that I'm an athlete, I wanna go to medical school and she was able to support me. And you know, at times, you know, when it was tough, you know, she understood and um, it wasn't used against me that, hey, you know, I'm a volleyball player, so I may be tired or I may miss um, classes sometimes. You know, it was all love and all support and I absolutely appreciate that. So recently too, you just passed your board exam. So again, congratulations. Talk to us about that feeling, you know, just preparing and getting ready. And once you finally got the confirmation that you passed it. Absolutely. So I equate to um, taking my boards, like getting that gold medal at the Olympics because you have trained for it. You have worked hard. You <laughs> have visualized yourself holding up that, you know, for me, it would be that diploma to say I was done. And, you know, the Olympic comes around every four years. My residency was three years. And so it's a three years of training and studying and working to take this exam and finally say, I am done. I've accomplished this. And then it's another 10 years before I have to take it. Um, and so for me, I'm almost sure it was as if I was Shelly and Fraser Price at the 2016 Olympics with my gold medal. But instead, I had my board pass. So um, I was, listen, I was so grateful. And I was ready to be done with all those stuff, that, all that book and studying. But yeah, the journey, the journey continues because um, medicine is a, it's a practice of medicine. So you're constantly reading. You're constantly trying to stay up to date with information. So um, not quite done with studying yet, but. You know, you mentioned earlier, you know, about, you know, being a student athlete, you know, you went to your professor talking about an open door policy. What are some athletes that you would give to a student athlete that, you know, they have to go through that because, again, they're still a student. So what advice would you give a student athlete at NCCU? Yeah, uh, you know, um, introduce yourself to your professors, you know, let them know that the sport that you play, um, let them know that you are excited to be in their class. And even if you're not excited to be there, you know, tell them that, you know, their class is just as important to them as it is important to you. And I think that level of respect will be reciprocated. Um, also, you know, the same effort that you put out on the field, put it in the classroom. This is a good example where COVID-19 has shut down sports for a lot of programs. And you're going to have to focus on your schoolwork. And, you know, maybe it was that, you know, you were, you missed so many classes, so you didn't really feel like you had to put that much effort in but you know tomorrow you know COVID has changed so many things I know athletes are going to have to really focus on finishing out the semester you know without that without sports and that same drive that same perseverance that same courage that you have on the field have it in the classroom you know um, for many athletes they don't they don't go to be professional athletes and so you're going to have to have a plan B you're gonna to have to know that, hey, this is going to get me to where I need to go to the next level. Um, you know, it's great if you're if you're good at your sport and you want to be a pro or you want to go on to play uh, and focus on your sport, but it's also good to have a plan B, and not only a plan B with comes to sports, but also a plan B when it comes to your academics. You know, for a lot of the athletes, you know, pick up a minor if you can. Sometimes a minor only requires a couple more classes. And then you could learn something new if you're unsure. Um, another thing that I would do is just be mindful of your schedule. You know, usually you have the season already set for you. So just be mindful of that. Let your uh, professors know in advance and plan your time accordingly. Um, so unfortunately, sometimes the weekends is the only time that you have to study. And, you know, it's a sacrifice that you do. You, you have to do now, but it will pay off in the end especially for the athletes who want to go to professional school, whether it's dentistry, medicine, law, it, it doesn't end. You're going to have to, you're going to be so busy during the week and your weekends are going to be the time when you have to really buckle down. So start practicing that from now. I'm not saying you can't have fun, but you know, you're going to have to, again, plan accordingly and make those changes. And the, the practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Oh, that was great advice for anybody listening to all the student athletes out there. Look, dropping gems. Naima out here is dropping gems. Letting y'all know. Again, she's been there. She's done that. 
you know, she's a doctor right now. So, I, you know, if you talk about you don't got time, look, I don't know if that's the one that she be talking to. Because the <laughs> amount of time that she has to do, shoo, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, wrapping up things here, you know, like I said, talked to you about earlier about this whole COVID, this whole this, uh, quarantine thing. Can you just, again, touch on your experience being on that front line um, you know, with this whole COVID-19 situation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've definitely seen and um, firsthand what COVID and how COVID affects the body. And um, it is so important that we continue to follow the guidelines and to practice social distancing and wearing our mask. Um, it is, someone may, you know, some, may, some will argue that it's a disease of the old because our older and more vulnerable population is affected. But, you know, just because it doesn't affect us as bad, research is now showing that, you know, younger folks are definitely having effects of COVID. And also, you know, we can pass it on to the, our older um, family members and to a vulnerable population. So it is very important that we not only think about ourselves and our family, but we think about our community and even, you know, and that will in turn help this country to get back where it needs to go. And again, medicine is a team sport and everybody right now is on the same team or should be on the same team. It requires each one of us to play our part. You know, we may not be physically out there on the field right now during this fall semester, but within our homes, we can be a part of that team and do what we need to do. And like I iterated before, and I will say it again, because I don't think I don't think I can say this enough. Please, please, please social distance and wear your mask, please, because this COVID thing is no joke. It is it is it is not a game. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have, you know, it, it plays no favorites. So, again, please wear your mask. Um, you know, again, this whole COVID situation, this whole kind of quarantine and stuff. What's one thing that you miss doing uh, since this whole quarantine started? I think one of the biggest things I miss is definitely being able to um, hang out with my friends and family. Um, I think as human beings, we naturally want to feel connected. And as much as Zoom allows us to do that, it's not the same um, when we are, you know, fellowshipping together, you know, whether at home or out or a sporting event. And so that's definitely one of the things that I miss. I picked up cycling to allow me to get outside and you know be a part of nature, soak up some sun, and to be physically active. But I'm not gonna lie, you know, playing volleyball, it's again, it requires people to be next to you, and you can't really do that. And so I definitely miss that um, uh, socializing aspect. Um, yep. But you know, wrapping up here, you know, when you look back at your time at NCCU, are there anybody that you would like to thank? Oh my gosh, there's so many people. There are so many people. And I would not do them any justice because the list would be endless. <laughs> but um, I will just go by department. So the athletic department, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much for continuing to support the athletes. The biology department, um, I am who I am today because of you know the support that you gave me in the classroom. You know, Thank you to the honors program. Uh, thank you to the International Department. Um, thank you to the, I, I believe it's called ASPABA, which is the African Student Association. Um, and just thank you in general to the Eagle family. You know, there's so many, so many, so many, so many people who helped me along this journey. And I'm so grateful. Um, in particular, David Naz was the tennis coach at NCCU. He's no longer there. And I can tell you for every step of my way, he has been supporting me ever since I stepped on campus of NCCU. Kyle, Kyle is, is Kyle is just Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I, I absolutely love and adore him. Uh, Bulldog, I'm still trying to be the kicker for NCCU. So Bulldog, listen. <laughs> to try out when when you decide to open practice so again there's so many people there's so many people so I, i'm so grateful from the bottom of my heart thank you so much i am who i am today because of the helping hands and i'm just so grateful and lastly i want to say for those who are starting out at nccu or continuing their journey you know there's so many people around you that can have doubts and will not believe in you don't let that person be you. So I want to encourage you that as much as there are people to support you, sometimes your biggest ally has to be you. And um, so for the freshmen that are coming on campus or for the 
the students who are continuing through their journey and their matriculation through NCCU, you know, keep pushing, keep striving, and just remember, we are no ordinary barnyard fowl. No. E oh, yeah, let them know, Eagle Pride Amplified, we soar. We don't just fly, we soar. Let them know. That's what I love to see. <laughs> yeah, Eagle Pride Amplified all day. Um, last <laughs> question right here. You know, if you had to describe your time here at NTCU in three words, what would those three words be? I would say the journey continues. That's a great one. That's a great, that's a great phrase right there. That's great right there. Um, last thing again, is there anything else that you want to say to the people that you might not have said or just to reiterate a couple things? Yes, absolutely. So I'm looking forward to working with the student athletes and the athletic department at NCCU. And I want to shout out, shout out to the um, UNC's uh, sports medicine department, Dr. Stafford, uh, Dr. Burkhoff, all my, my fellows, um, Michael and Adam. I'm looking forward to the year and I cannot wait to get out there on the sidelines. And we are looking forward to seeing you keep doing your amazing things, keep doing everything. And again, like I said, thank you from me, from NCCU, from everybody. Thank you again for being on the front line, being an essential worker. And again, your work is not going unnoticed. And lastly, I'm saying one last time for the people listening, please, I'm looking at the camera, wear your mask and socially distance. Your mask and socially distance. Hey, you heard it. From, you heard it from the doctor. I, I, I'm just a regular person, but you heard it from the doctor herself, <laughs> Naima Standing. Again, thank you so much, Naima, for joining me. This has been Where Are They Now, where we take former NCCU student athletes and see what they're up to post NCCU. This is Calvin Barnes from the NCC Sports Network. Catch you next time, y'all. Remember, Eagle Pride Amplified. Catch you next time, y'all.